viewers, and we've got a big treat for you today. Uh, we're here at the Life on Mars Gallery, 56 Bogart Street, and we're going to be looking at an exhibition by this gentleman, Arnold Meshes, and it's 70 years of 75 years. 75 years of works on paper. Now I know I dropped in here. You had a show. I guess was was it last spring? Was it last year? Okay. That uh, featured a lot of your work that you you'd made with your uh, files that you'd gotten from the FBI, yeah. and uh, they'd been following you for something like 25 years. 26 years. 26 years. <laughs> okay. And uh, so this is kind of an ex well, I guess this is going on contemporaneously with a lot of the other stuff. Um, tell us a little bit about your your background and some of the other uh, things that you've done. You'd been you living in Los Angeles recently, but you've moved back. Are you living in New York now or in Florida? Part time in Brooklyn and part time in Gainesville, Florida. Part time in Brooklyn. What do you think of the Brooklyn art scene these days? I love it. <laughs> What's not to love? Yeah. Uh, maybe we could go over here. We can start looking at some of the early pieces. Sure, 1940. 1940. And but you were you were born in the Bronx, is that right? And then yeah. somehow you ended up out in California. How did that happen? Um, I wanted to go somewhere, and I didn't live in the Bronx. Oh. No, I lived in Buffalo, New York. Okay. Dunkin', New York, and so on. You were just born in the Bronx. I was just born. There. That that's good enough. <laughs> well, one of the things that I noticed when I was looking at the work is that, uh, you know, you've got a great, a great line, but I also sense that you've got uh, kind of a, uh, a design sense that makes me think of uh, maybe some of the Art Nouveau artists or something like this. I'm looking at this piece the way you've kind of divided, almost has kind of a, an oriental sense to it, but did you... I mean, you must have studied commercial art and art history and all that I stuff, right? I was originally trained in advertising design. Ah. I didn't know anything about painting. I came out of the Depression, and no one thought about being a fine artist during the Depression. So I studied advertising design, and I decided I wanted to be a painter. I wanted to express myself. And who do you think your biggest influences were when you started out? All the social painters. Well, yeah. Social, social, social realists. No, just the social painters. Okay. Francisco Goya, Dormier, Cathy Colwitz, people like that. Max Beckman, so on. Courbet? No. Okay. <laughs> this one says. 1940. My pop. That's my pop. I did that when I was 17. I knew nothing at all about drawing or fine art or anything. And I kept the drawing all these years. Framed it for the show. Now this is some of the more recent stuff. This is 1997. Now is this magic marker or is this no, regular pen and ink? And stupid things like that. This is pen and ink. This is speedball you, pen and ink. And you, so you like to stick with the good old classic uh, techniques and materials. Yeah, magic markers are it's, it's not, it's not a good pen for me. You know, you're talking about uh, working with the social painters, uh, and you've always had kind of a, I guess, a political slant. You feel like that to your work, and so I see something like this, and you've got, obviously, it looks like a politician or somebody out there in front of the press microphones. It's actually Rupert Murdoch. Rupert Murdoch. <laughs> I actually thought this was Ed Koch when I saw it first. Well, it could be anybody, but the sure. point of the matter is anybody that has that kind of uh, background and, and uh, political makeup, you know, of the right wing. And that's the way I treat them. This is a nice, just a regular study, but I like the contrasts of the shadows there are and the figures. Shadows. I don't well, talk about shadows, I talk about lines and shapes. All right, there's some nice shapes there under, yeah. the, under the truck. And this again, is this is all just straight uh, speedball pens and Indian ink? Indian ink. Yeah. 
let's take a quick run through the back little project room here. Actually, um, Michael said that this collection here, this particular group of portraits, was all based on cell phone pictures of people that came and visited your last show. Yeah, I had them sit down and, you know, and I did a photograph of them and I did a drawing in the front of them. There were 129 heads. Of is that Irving Sandler? It is. <laughs> I thought so. Uh, Judith Brom, I think, is that? No, no. Um, that's me, that's my wife. Uh huh. Now. That's Anthony Hayden, just. <laughs> okay. I was kind of wondering, you know, you were saying that you were being uh, being watched and you had records you kept by the FBI. What was it that uh, got you into trouble? How did that initially start off? There were 500,000 people in the United States who were followed by the, by the FBI. 500,000? Anybody who did it, anybody who signed a petition against rent control was, was covered by the FBI. Well, I know I heard that you, you heard you when you were talking out here during your last show, and you were saying that when you actually got a hold of the files and you started looking at them, that you realized a couple of your neighbors had been watching you and they were, yeah. they were teachers. Yeah. Is that true? Yeah. <laughs> I, I'd always been suspicious of teachers. Why don't you take a photo of this one? Yeah. This one? That's the final piece in the show. Now this is actually based on a street scene. Is that what the Lower East Side or? I have no idea where the city is. It's a makeup of many cities. And it's chandeliers. And then you've got the chandeliers in there. And mounted on the uh, on the drawing. It's called double vision. It was the first piece sold in the show. Wow! Congratulations. We're gonna uh, we'll run over to the other side here, and then we'll wrap up pretty fast. Well, this is a nice wall of kind of uh, quicker studies. What? Quicker studies? No, they're not quicker. Studies. They're not. Okay. Well, they have a freshness about them, and yeah, kind of a spontaneity. That that was that was maybe what I was commenting yeah. on, and these are. Okay, this one says 58. They're all 58. Ah. This is a series called War Images. And they're taken from the Holocaust. And that's the Hiroshima Beach right there. You know, you were mentioning Goya, and uh, I guess you could barely look at this and not think of his uh, series of etchings. What was it, The Nightmares of War? Something like that. The disasters of war. The disasters of war. And uh, I guess they call that foxing. The staining, is that just spot the, the staining on this, is that uh, no, that's spontaneous? Have you that's, you actually, did you paint that in there? No, that's an accident. It's totally, totally an accident. They shouldn't be there, but they are there. Okay. Well, let's come around the corner here and we'll uh, wrap up going down these walls. I thought this was a very beautiful uh, figure study, but you really capture the character of this lady. That's my mother. This is your mother. <clears throat> this and is 1997. Peter, Peter Sells, in an essay about my work, called this one of the best drawings of the 20th century. Well, that's pretty stiff competition. <laughs> no. Is this also your mother here? No, that's my grandmother. <laughs> my father's mother. Okay. And uh, I like the shapes and forms here. I won't call them shadows, but uh, I like that. This was also sold. Congratulations. Well, we've been talking a little bit about some of your political engagements and some of the problems that that's led to you, led you to. What do you think about the current uh, situation with surveillance and the NSA and... Uh, that's what, I'm, that's what, what you're worried about now? Absolutely. 
during my time, 26 years, there were 500,000 people were um, shadowed by the FBI. Yeah. Today, the NSA can do 2 billion people in one day. And that means that everyone's next in line, which is the title of that drawing in the other room. Ah, ah, ah. This is a wonderful kind of uh, this extended is a study. For a painting. Is that the way that you would develop your, your uh, compositions for a painting? You'd have several layers of uh, film that you would work over and... No, this is just one, just a collage for a painting and that's... I often make collages for my paintings or drawings for my paintings. And many of these are studies for paintings. And this is the, this is brushing as opposed to pen and ink. Okay. And is that some kind of a bird there? It's a vulture. A, a vulture. And it was done in 1961, as you can see. Okay, Arnold. Well, thank you for taking the time to uh, talk my, to us a little my bit. My pleasure, Arnold. And uh, good luck, and we hope <laughs> hope to be looking at your work for many years to come. Now you're you're 92 now. Yep. Okay, well, <laughs> looking pretty good. Anyway, it was a pleasure to talk to you. Congratulations on the show. And I do hope your friends and people come look at the show. We're going to try to get everybody out to see it. Yeah, it's up until December 19th. Okay, thanks, Arnold. And I always make it a point at the end of saying, thank you, Kate. Thank you, what? <laughs> thank you, Kate. That's my wife. Oh man, that was beautiful, beautiful.